Great hand over your heart. Ready to begin. I, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you, Dr. Gerson. Can we have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. We got a first. Can we get a second? Second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, moving on. Nothing to report out of closed session. And so we'll move on to um, staff presentations and information. And so I'm excited about this one because we have an introduction to and report by our student representative, our first one of the year, so Dr. Egan. Can you introduce this fine man? I am happy to. Um, good evening, Mr. Han, members of the board. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our student rep for this first quarter. And uh, I have with us today from Torrance High, High School, Brandon Kakuno. Uh, Brandon is a senior, a four-year member of ASB, serving as a freshman rep and then a sophomore and junior class president before coming the, becoming the ASB president this year. He's a four-year member of the basketball team and will be a three-year letter winner. Brandon has also been a member of Tartar Knight, serving as junior rep last year, is a member of NHS CSF, and CSF boards, Human Relations Board, member of the varsity of varsity club and service league. Um, and just a fun fact to add that his father, Dennis was also the ASB president um, just a short while ago. <laughs> uh, so uh, also with us tonight, uh, supporting Brandon representing Torrance High is principal Kareem Gerges. So um, Brandon, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Egan. Uh, good evening, President Hahn, members of the school board, Dr. Stowe, cabinet members, and community. Uh, like Dr. Egan said, my name is Brandon Kikuno, and I'm the ASB president at Torrance High School, um, and it is an honor to be here to share out about the Torrance schools. Uh, first off, with Torrance High, we kicked off uh, the year with our annual Tartar time that was a huge success and got freshmen and new students familiar with our campus. To follow that, we also had our freshman senior buddy week, uh, where we pair a freshman and senior to do weekly activities, such as bring your senior, bring your freshman buddy lunch and seniors making matching t-shirts for themselves and their buddy. Uh, it's just another great way to get familiarity to the freshmen. And we will also be having our back to school night Wednesday um, with an informational ninth grade parent meeting before that. Uh, we had our first two home football games with our student section, AKA the Maroon Monsoon, having good attendance so far. Uh, before our first game, we had a cornhole tournament for the students, um, and we ended up defeating Hawthorne 47 to zero that game. At our second home game, we had a packed student section despite the rain, making our maroon monsoon feel like we were sitting in an actual monsoon. <laughs> but um, despite the rain, we also had um, a fun night with our howdy dance that we were able to bring back since 2019. Uh, we will also be having our senior sunrise, and the date for that is October 4th. Um, and we also be having club info day Wednesday where all students can find interest in service clubs, interest clubs, and culture clubs that appeal to them. Um, we're also planning our first spirit week and homecoming with the theme of Tangled and our first all school rally coming up in October. Uh, now moving on to a South High report that I got from ASB president Daniela Meyer. Um, their welcome week was a huge success. Participation in dress up and spirit days was significantly better than last year. South High's first and second home football games were very spirited and energetic. They're trying to better organize their student section leaders and incorporate each grade in this group. South High will be having their first fall pep rally this Friday. South High's homecoming is coming up and their theme is glow in the dark. Uh, West High report from their ASB president, Allison Sai, said that West High had their first welcome back assembly that turned out really well. Uh, spirit seems to be about the same, but they will get a clear view of that after their first rally. Their top 15 for homecoming is going to be announced this Friday at lunch with the theme of disco. Uh, they have already started setting up for homecoming and their first rally is on the 23rd and will be a music genre themed. It will also be when they announce their top five. West will also have their senior sunrise coming up and tailgate this Friday. Uh, and finally, a report from North High from their president, Kaya Katero. Uh, North High hosted a successful welcome, be welcome back Spirit Week as well, and have noticed participation in Spirit Week has increased over the years. They also had their first tailgate of the year and home game, which was pretty successful in regards to increasing school spirit. Their student section could be better, but they are currently working on different themes and bringing back designated spirit teams that can hype up the crowd. 
Class presidents are also assembling their class councils, which are basically separate branches of very speed for their own grade that are included during fourth period. Uh, their homecoming is in motion with the theme of Dancing in the Moonlight, and nominations for homecoming court are coming up this next week. Uh, now moving on to district-wide concerns, um, our student body has experienced and observed. We feel that the amount of trash going on at school is a problem for not only Torrance High, but after speaking to the other schools, an issue going on at all schools. Um, here at Torrance High, Mr. Gerges, our principal, along with our site supervisor and custodial staffs, are getting together to come up with ideas to get students to stop littering on our campuses. In the meantime, we have weekly Tidy Up Tuesdays where all service clubs clean the campus every Tuesday for an hour to combat that issue. I've heard from the other schools that they're adding more trash cans made by clubs, and along with the trash cans, trash also comes the amount of food waste at our campuses. So West High implemented boxes to put these unwanted food, unopened, untouched food inside these boxes that students can grab if they don't have food. Um, South High also has been implementing new trash cans that they had clubs made. And when I asked them how that is working, they said they're seeing um, that the amount of trash is uh, being helped by adding more trash cans, but it's not... Um, defeating the problem in whole. Um, and then with the food, unwanted food boxes, um, they said that students are using them, but they're not sure if students are actually taking food from them. So um, I'll get more information on that for my next meetings. Um, but other than that, we are still continuing to think of ideas to counter and stop the amount of trash at our campuses. Um, and other than that, that's all I have. So thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Any questions or comments from the board? I, I really appreciate it. In addition to learning about what's happening at all of the different high schools, um, being able to put a spotlight on an issue that students themselves are are um, encountering and, and finding ways creatively to to um, try to tackle. And then hopefully the district as, as well can figure out, we can put our minds together to figure out a way to um, make sure that our waste is, is being managed in a way that is ethical and sustainable. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? On board. Well, thank you, Brandon. So good to have you here. You're much better than Ian. So you know what? It's gonna be a lot better. So we're happy. We're delighted, and I'm sure you're much better than your dad as well. And so, by the way, um, his parents are awesome people as well. And so it's good to have you on our board. And thank you again for sharing again what your district concerns that you have with trash. Yeah, y'all, y'all crazy like the old kids, man. So I, I do appreciate that, and that you're trying to find solutions for that. We really do appreciate that. Moving forward, um, report from TEF. I don't see anybody here. So um, I don't think there's a report from TEF. So, so moving on, report from um, PTA, uh, Tolerance Council uh, PTA, um, Mrs. Reagans. Take it, but um, I wish TEF were here to report too because they're doing important things. Um, anyway, welcome back to school, everybody. That's the excitement, of course, in the last uh, few weeks is getting back in the uh, the thrill of being at our schools and working with students. Um, and our schools are having their back to school nights and doing association meetings with the entire school community. And it's always nice to get back in touch with people. Um, I did want to emphasize that I know you guys passed had a resolution last month, but that September and October are PTA membership months. And I've actually already heard from several of you that you have joined um, and are intending to join. But if you have not, either here or out in the audience, if you go to Torrance Council of PTAs uh, website, and that's what it is, it's just torrencecouncilofptas.org, uh, there are several opportunities and you can choose how many schools to join, all the schools, one school, whatever you want, and uh, we'll have the opportunity to join your PTA. Joining makes you a part of that community and a part of what that school can provide for the community. So um, please do join. Uh, last year, we did have 100% school board participation, and I'm hoping that we can continue that again this year. Um, for this year, the goal that the council has set is to try to reach 100% teacher participation. Now, it's surprising to me that not every teacher joins, but in fact, not every teacher does join PTA. So the uh, emphasis will be on making sure they know what the benefits are for the students and for their schools and for themselves, actually, there are some personal benefits too, um, and that they should uh, think about at least joining the PTA fold and being part of that organization. So we're, we're hoping for 100% teachers and staff, so that includes staff, 
And then last but not least, for our district administration. Um, I don't know that we've ever had a particular focus on doing 100% staff, administrative staff participation and, and membership. So we will be uh, focusing on that. So thanks to those of you who have already done it. If you haven't joined, please do. Um, and if you need information about that, contact me and I can share that with you again. Um, I do wanna mention, by the way, that the first thing that happens every school year is Reflections, which is um, not really an art contest, but it's a creative expression contest. This year, the theme is Show Your Voice, which is kind of interesting. So in every kind of media, we're asking the students to be creative and demonstrate how they can show and share their voice and their opinions uh, in their communities. So that's going on now. And our students are creating art and wonderful productions that are expressing themselves. So support that. If you know of a student that's doing it, help them or tell them to contact us if they need uh, assistance with that. That will all be done virtually. They will be collecting those entries virtually. And that's something that has changed in the last few years, of course. Um, it's all become much less hands-on. And then the last thing I want to mention is that um, Dr. Uh, Stowe and I are talking about doing a collaboration and trying to assist our new administrators, which more than half of the administrators at the schools are new, and our new PTA uh, leaders, and about half of them are new, and helping them to figure out exactly how to collaborate and plan most effectively between them so that uh, we're sure that they have a really good solid foundation as to what PT can do, PTA can do, what they can't, um, that they're not there to provide money for anything that they need on campus, but that they can assist with student programs and bring enrichment to the campus. So we will be working on doing that with uh, all of our folks uh, next month. Uh, so st uh, stay tuned and we hope that there's some good results from that. Uh, after, above that, I think that's all I have to say today. There will always be more coming. Um, we did do the kickoff for the Skechers Walk, by the way. Um, and many of you I know have participated in that uh, as a fundraiser and PTAs have been very involved in that as a really effective fundraiser at our school campuses and a way to bring some extra funds for those things that are not necessarily uh, on the official docs. So that will be happening too for most of our schools. Um, and that's it. Anybody have any questions or please questions join if you board? have not. Any questions on the board? Okay, thank you. Thank appreciate you, Mr. Reagans. And I do appreciate the whole collaborative um, work with us um, coming for the three year project. And so, and I hope that we have more opportunities like that. I think, I think that's a great idea to be collaborative to work on a certain project together. Um, I think that's going to be very helpful in every way. And so, thank you so much. And I love the idea of the collaboration. Moving forward, discussion items. I'm sorry, Superintendent's report, Dr. Stowe. Thank you, President Han, board members. Um, so, again, Mrs. Reagans. Stole some of my thunder, you know. I was going to mention back to school nights and all these things, but you know, last week and this week, and and uh, as a parent, it's it's nice to be able to get in the classrooms and and see what the meet the teachers, and and so I know some of us have been out already to some schools, and and the excitement on campus is tremendous, and the the turnout is um, is very strong, and so I think people are are happy to have these uh, events again that we haven't had since the fall of twenty or 2019. Um, classified staff development, as you know, is an important piece of, of what we're uh, moving forward with. Uh, we have the, the new director uh, of employee resources, uh, Carrie Skoll, and she's putting on tomorrow the first of what will be a number of uh, different sessions for our uh, classified staff. And so tomorrow is a, a Zoom session with all of our school site clerical folks uh, to be able to go over some things, talk about uh, um, institutional knowledge and how we how we maintain that as as we have turnover in positions. Uh, talk about some of the safety protocols at schools and and uh, give an opportunity to to network within the the various quadrants. And so thanks to Carrie for putting that together. Uh, Friday, uh, we will be celebrating with uh, Katie Dupay, our North High Science teacher at the uh, L LA County Office of Education uh, Teacher of the Year luncheon. Um, so it'll be great to be able to to celebrate with her and and all the other uh, teachers from the the county of Los Angeles that that made it that far. 
Um, and then also um, want to let you know that uh, email went out today that uh, we are hosting a um, vaccine clinic on Wednesday from 1 to 6 p.m. So information's uh, gone out about how to register and make sure you have your insurance card because I didn't have it. I was trying to register and I probably won't get a spot now, but we'll, <laughs> I'll try it when I'll try it when I get home. So anyway, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stowe. Any questions from the board? Oh, yes. Dr. Um, all right. So we're in the midst or just beginning um, Hispanic Heritage Month. I was wondering if you could share with us what our school district is doing to celebrate. Sure. Um, I'm actually going to turn it over to Dr. Crumpy. Uh, one thing that she uh, has has done now for a couple of years um, is whenever we have uh, the, the different uh, resolutions that, that Ed Services pushes out some information for resources for, for teachers. So Dr. Crumpy. Yeah, right. So with the approval of tonight's resolution, um, we will be pushing out both elementary and secondary toolkits. This is year two. So it's being updated from, from last year's that will go out for our teachers um, as we kick off um, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. This year's theme is UNIDOS, Exclusivity for a Stronger Nation, which reflects and celebrates the rich diversity of the Hispanic and Latino communities. Um, and so as, as we reflect in our own community and, and the about 33% of students who um, identify as um, Hispanic or Latino, um, we, we, you know, we think this is an important event to push these um, uh, uh, teacher resources, lesson plan ideas, um, literature suggestions, and other resources out to, to our students. And so, as Dr. Still mentioned, um, we, we do this um, preceding um, each of our um, board resolutions as appropriate um, with, with many other, many other um, uh, traditions and toolkits. And that was started last year. Um, as we brought on uh, Melissa Waller. So she's our um, resource teacher in the district for history and social studies. And so we've been able to, to provide those resources to teachers for many, uh, many areas because of that hiring of her. We thank her for that too. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Thank you, Dr. Stowe. We do appreciate that. Moving forward, oral communications for non-agenda items. Um, do we have any oral communications, Dr. Uh, Ms. Morrow? There are none, so we can skip that then. Discussion action items. Do we have any cards for those? Nothing online. No, I got no cards either. Nothing. All right, we're moving forward today. All right, so then moving on. Um, do I still have to read? I don't have to read that thing, right? Because we have no discussion. Um, nobody's going to. I wanted in case just someone. Showed okay. Up. All right. I'll, then I will read it. Speakers <clears throat> wishing to address the board on agenda topics have completed the appropriate submission form on the district website or in-person card. Tom allotted for public. Comments on agenda items limited three minutes per comment. Time allotted for each agenda item is 30 minutes per topic. The speaker may not relinquish his or her time to another. So 10.2, selection of board of education candidate for reappointment to personal commission board. Dr. Stowe. Yes, uh, in compliance with uh, personnel commission rules, uh, we have to um, uh, make, a no make a nominate or make, make the nominee known. And then a subsequent meeting, uh, have the board actually appoint uh, this individual. And, and my recommendation would be uh, to uh, to have the board consider uh, Mrs. Reagan's, Ms. Terry Reagan's again for uh, to continue her her term or have a new term because she uh, finished out the uh, the remaining term of Gary Kuahara, who who moved out of the out of the city. So um, to to make it known that that Terry would be the board's appointee to the personnel commission. Any questions or comments from the board? It's okay. Yes. You know, I just uh, wanted to make co one comment about the personnel commission. Uh, we in this district have a really good and strong relationship with the personnel commission, and uh, we look forward to that partnership. So uh, I also understand that you know Miss Reagan's uh, has been serving unfilled term, uh, well left by uh, Mr. Commissioner Quahara, and so I'd be happy to make the motion to. Uh, but if you make the motion, there's, there's no motion. It's just. Uh, basically saying that she'll she'll be brought forward at a future meeting for uh, no for the board to vote on. Okay. okay. So I just have a quick question though. How do we, um, what is the process of this in terms of selecting the member of the board or the personnel commission board? Like does the cabinet discuss it amongst themselves? How do we recommend, like were there other candidates? Like how many candidates were there considered for this position? Um, this is Reagan's. 
<laughs> what's considered to it is i mean typically you know the the board would want someone who's been a board member uh as mr kuahara had been a board member for many years and then uh you know prior to to him representing um uh you know it, each of the board's appointees uh owen griffith was was uh before mr kuahara so uh, because to represent the board on the personnel commission it's uh, nice to have been in that seat so that you understand the decisions that are being made. Uh, and, and so, um, you know, she, she expressed interest uh, uh, and, and there was a vacancy and opportunity to have me recommend her to the board for consideration. And that's all I wanted to know because I wanted to know what's the practice, what is the criteria? Like, you know, we, we just didn't know, right? So you're bringing this before us and we got to approve something that we don't understand even the process. That's why yeah. I want a clarity on the process so that, which makes sense, right? We want someone that was a previous board member right. to be represented. To, but I wasn't sure if that's a requirement. Is that- Not a requirement. Yeah, that's why. So I don't know what the criteria is, you know? So that's why uh, when we pick our candidate, I wanted to make sure that we understood the process of it. And so, sure. so I guess we'll make that decision on that day when um, future date. I think we said on, uh, is there a date already suggested? Uh, the next meeting, right? Right. It's it's an item. It's on November seventh. Uh, November seventh. So two months from now. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? No, just thank you, Mrs. Reagan's, for your willingness to do it. All right. Moving on to ten point three: approval of polling stations for the two thousand twenty two statewide general election. Dr. Stone. Thank, oh, Dr. Dr. Butler. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, as we have been doing the last few years, the county registrar recorder asks us for polling locations based upon what they see as the needs for the precinct. Uh, they do start with the city first and then come to us with what they still need. And you can see the uh, list of facilities that they have asked for this time, seven locations. And the nice part on this one is because we don't have anyone on the ballot. We will actually be able to get reimbursement for some of our expenses and keep it instead of giving it straight back to them in the fees that they charge us to host an election. So not a money maker. Don't get me wrong. But at <laughs> least we get to keep some of the fees this time. So we would uh, ask that you would approve these locations. Go ahead, Dr. Gerson. I was curious, um, why are they uh, reimbursing less yeah. this year and who makes that decision? The county registrar makes that decision almost by fiat. There's no uh, backup to what the decision making process is. There's merely a provision of here what the rates are. And you're still supportive of us approving this? I think that it's the right civic thing to do to make our locations available for voting. Okay. So last time, I don't remember us having this many last time. Last time we did not. Uh, so that was a... Uh, primary election and so the general they try to put more out there because there's better turnout typically for a general so to get this right then they're asking us for more but paying us less that is an accurate statement <laughs> so that's why it's a little troublesome here right because they're asking us, and that's why my question is did the city give less that's my question i do not know the answer so that's the thing i feel like i'm wondering because you said that they came to us after approaching the city first and so I'm wondering if the city said no to certain ones, uh, and then they're asking us to do more because of the city. In fact, the city said less. I'm just kind of possibly because that'd, kind of, that'd be kind of bothersome for me because they're going to reimburse us less. We're going to give them more, and yet the city is the one that also did less. If that is the case, which we do not know, and so uh, I would like to know. Yes, unless you know. Well, no, I was just going to say. Do you remember when they had someone come and speak yes. to us and try to convince <laughs> us to to give them more sites? They didn't. The one thing that I will say that uh, the city gets the benefit of and we don't have to do is the long voting window. So they have agreed that they keep the shorter windows for us because we're impacting kids. Fair enough trade in my book. I also like that they're all secondary schools, not elementary schools and adult schools. The reimbursement like that, does the school sites affect the reimbursement we're getting? Like we're getting reimbursed for the use of our facilities, not necessarily for us not holding our election. So if they had not used our facilities, we wouldn't get reimbursed for our personnel costs, correct? That is correct. And it's not, to be clear, it's not a uh, payment for rent. We're not able to charge for the location. It's merely a reimbursement for our extra people that are involved here. And again, they choose the reimbursement rate. We don't, we don't get to negotiate a contract. I, well, I think, no, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, you, you finish up. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was making a motion. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. No, I just want to say that um, I'm very happy that we're providing these voting sites, polling sites for the election coming up, and we should be doing it every single time. 
I don't think that we should be looking at how much money we're getting. Yes, we should look at how much effect, how much it affects our students. But as an educational institution and as part of the public government system, it's our duty to provide such sites. And it's great that they're reimbursing us for um, the personal costs and whatnot, but I, I just, I, I'm proud that we are able to provide these sites for um, an election. And as all elected officials ourselves, we really should be promoting democracy, which is obviously the foundation of our country. We wanna make it as easy as possible for people to come out and vote, not you know, count how inconvenient it may be for us or you know, the voters, I'm, I'm not going to give an excuse to the voters saying it's inconvenient to come out to go vote. I, I, I think that's the last excuse we should be using. But we should, in all case, doing what you are, you guys are doing is to mitigate whatever effect there is upon our students, and especially our younger ones. So it is totally fine to me that we are providing these polling sites. And there are seven of them. And that's great that they're paying us some money for it. But I think it's part of our role as a district, this is a public institution. The least thing we can do, headed by elected officials, the least we can do is really be supportive of elections. Thank you. Oh, last separate thing. Would you like to tell us, because we don't have an election this year, um, how much we'll be saving the school district? Over a quarter of a million dollars. Thank you. I just wanted to add that out. And again, I'm not saying that we're against the idea of election or having a polling place. And we're like, that make, let's make that clear, right? But the thing is, is the issue is the city also has a responsibility too. What, and my point is, is that you're asking us to take more of the onus than the city. And so th your argument should be complaining to the city because the city should be also the ones, like you said, for pro-democracy to get people voting, whatever it may be. All I'm asking is, is that there be a shared burden on this, right? My thing is, of course, we, we're totally for voting. We're all about democracy. We're not saying that. But the question becomes is, why do we have to bear the more of the burden when they're the city? You know, uh, And that's what I'm only asking. I'm asking, did this happen? Did they ask more from our sites? Because the city has not given them more sites. That because Dr. Butler just stated that um, is that they went to the city first and then they didn't get all the what they needed, so they had to come to us. So that's my only question is, uh, is it equal or are they asking us to more of the burden? So we're not, not we're not going to not approve this. I'm just asking. Oh, I know you're going to approve it. Yes, yeah. I know you are. I, I'm not saying I'm, my concern is talking so much about the money that we're getting, how we're getting more, giving more sites, but yet less money. Why does that matter? This, we should support democracy as much as possible. And I'm really tired of voters coming out, uh, potential voters saying they're not, they're just, they're too busy as if we're not busy um, ourselves. Uh, voters are busy, people are busy, but the inconvenience should not be uh, a main reason why they are not voting. And we should be doing as much as possible to be supporting this, not nitpicking every little thing. And this, and I'm not gonna, point my fingers to to the city as what you wanted me to do just now I definitely don't want that they are putting up some sites for voting and as we are too so I just think this is a public interest kind of thing and I'm not going to count exactly how many sites we did last time and how many sites we did this time and how much money we're getting in for each one that's that's my point but I do know that you guys were that you were I have no doubt that you were planning to approve this one anyway Right. But again, my, my again, my point is, though, we have a responsibility here. Right. My thing is, is that they went to the city first for a reason. Right. Before they came to us. Right. And so whatever they couldn't fill, I get that. I, I'm OK with that. You know, my question is, is it did they do less this time? That's all I'm asking. You know, you're saying, well, it doesn't matter. I, I understand what you're saying. It doesn't matter. Of course, we want people to be, have access to voting. But I'm curious to know whether or not the city did less polling station. And, and the question is why? Because obviously we're adding on. So that's, and that, and the thing is this election is smaller than the primary election, right? So yet we're adding on more for a smaller election. If I'm, if I'm correct on this, right? It's a, yeah. not, not, that's this incorrect. is a larger election. Okay, this is a large election then. So that question becomes is maybe it is equal then. I just don't know. That's why the question was stated was, is it equal or 
you know, that's what I would want. Well, you, you bring up an interesting point and, and re-trigger my memory as far as um, they didn't ask us for as much last time because the city was having an election and they did, I think, offer up more. Yeah. But in the previous time, they did ask us for more because, again, the city did not give as much. So mm-hmm. I, I think your, your, your memory is accurate and, you're, and you are bringing up some interesting points. Um, I, mean, I think my point is that this is about democracy. I think we should do whatever we can to help promote the foundation of our country. I really don't like that. You know, in the past we picked this, and we, you know, we have this many sites versus they have the many sites. I don't care whether or not they went to the city first or us. There, it. This is an equal uh, burden that we all have. We are a public institution. Say we were a private school, they go to city first. Yeah, I, I would care for that. That they go to public institution first. Yes, and if they needed more sites, okay, maybe I'll let my private school um, lend out. Um, the, the facility for polling sites. It's just, to me, I, I just never, I try to, I, I just never understood some of the most basic things. If there are things out there that, you know, um, has to do with, you know, programs or whatever other joint use that we have with the city, okay, we can talk about it. You know, how much is everybody putting in? But this is about voting. This is about democracy. We want people to come out and vote. So anyway, that that's my point. I'm not Right, but saying the, that you don't you um, have, you know, equal, I you, point out to how many people, how many times they they have provided rooms or or the sites. But you and just, that's it. Go ahead. But you use the word equal burden. My question is, it's not an equal. If it's if they do less, it's not an equal burden. You just said equal burden. No, it's, we are a public institution, just like that. they are. They're not above us, as I, you always say. I know. But you know, we are equal. I agree. We are public. Equal, but if they're doing less, and we have to do more, that's what I'm asking. Why is that? Do you see what I'm saying? That's why it's not an equal burden because. We have to do more than they do. So I just, all I'm saying is that that's what you use the word equal burden. I'm thinking, well, if they give less station, we have to give more. How is that an equal burden? Why does it matter to you how much other people are doing when this is just our duty? You know, it's like, for example, you know, if some of our staff members do, do less work and more work, we still have to do the work that we're supposed to because it's our role. But you know, what? you're president. I think we're taking too much time on something that is not supposed to be an issue. Okay. So, so let's have a motion then to vote on this. Approve. Purchase. I'll move. To, for us to approve for the polling locations for the 2022 statewide general election. I will second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against say nay. Motion approved. 10.4 board discussion on requesting the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health to align with California Department of Public Health guidelines. So I think I should do this, correct, Dr. Stowe? Um, and so I am the one who asked that this agenda item be placed. Um, I, I think that it is important for us to be clear of our district's position on this matter of COVID issues. Um, And I think the reason why, there was a letter recently sent out by superintendents and um, our district was not a part of that letter for whatever reason it is. And I think my concern was that there'll be a little bit of confusion whether or not we agree um, with what that letter stated, which is that the state county would align with the state's understanding of masking and regarding this issue. So the state's position on this is that it's a strong recommendation, right? If someone has COVID, right, that they wear a mask for 10 days, right? Whereas the county's position on this is a mandate, is not a recommendation. So the difference between a suggestion and a mandate. My point is, is that, you know what? We are moving on. Again, COVID is still here, but we are moving on. It should not be a mandate. It should be a strong recommendation, especially when it comes to burden for our staff. That's why I wanted to make sure that we asked, we sent a letter out to the supervisors, as well as to Dr. Ferrer and Dr. Gilchek, stating that we, we, we also agree that this should be, that the county would align itself with the state. As a matter of fact, today, Biden on 60 Minutes yesterday said, the pandemic is over. Last month, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention adjusted its COVID-19 guidance to urge the nation away from measures such as quarantines and social distancing and instead focus on reducing severe disease from COVID-19, right? And I think that, you know what, just for the sake of clarity, that we should ask, Dr. Ferrer, that you should align with the state's recommendation on this, even when CDC also says that we should also now move away from quarantines and social distancing, instead focus on reducing severe disease, which we are now doing. Not only that, two weeks from now, there's a good chance that we're going to be the lowest tier on this whole COVID tracing thing, right? So it doesn't make sense. I feel like, you know what, we have to move away from mandates 
and just follow the recommendations, strong recommendations from the state. And so to align ourselves with our fellow districts around us, I think it was make sure that we were clear, especially when this came out in the Daily Breeze, right, that we too at TUSD strongly suggest that LA County follows the second state's recommendation on this matter when it comes to this idea of masking, right? Um, so just to let you clear, so this is the county guidance, right? of indoor masking of close contacts. Regardless of universal indoor masking policy, the LA County blank and coordinate currently requires close contacts to, to a case who remain asymptomatic to wear a highly protective mask for 10 days after last exposure when around others while indoors and to test at least once three to five days after exposure if they wish to quarantine at home, right? The state guidance is this. The state guidance on tender indoor mask and close contact is a strong recommendation via should mask and not a mandate. Right. That's the point that I'm trying to make here, that we write a letter to make our position clear as a board. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Liu? Um, as a, a lot of people know, I um, a while ago, I submitted in a formal letter, uh, respectfully requesting Dr. Ferrer to have our county department of public health align with the state. This is when the state um, does not require the mask mandate anymore. And although, although, although the virus is a very serious matter, and I'm not underestimating the seriousness of COVID-19, um, the science that we have on COVID-19 has changed. Back in early 2020, when, we, when it first came out and people were dying left and right, we knew nothing about this virus. Yeah, we were all scared and, and for good reasons when we should wear a mask. But now, as my letter stated, it's, it's different. We know how it works. We know how this virus spreads. We know how this virus attacks our cells. We know how uh, we even have vaccinations against this virus and updated with every booster there is. We even have medication that, to cure you if you unfortunately got infected with this virus. Uh, it's just, things are just so different nowadays um, than what it was like in 2020 when I strongly proposed for masks. So at this point, I believe that our county is the only county that is not uh, following the state's um, lead in, in not requiring by us to wear um, masks. And I think that as someone who, I'm someone who have, I've always said, school safety is one of my top three priorities. And this one here is an invisible enemy that I do care very much about and not for our students, for our population and community not to be sick. But for now, it, it, it's by now it, it's just different. So I don't think that we should uh, go out of our way to be uh, different. I would definitely support um, a letter or so requesting the LA County Department of Public Health to align itself with the state as stated on this agenda item. Thank you. Any other board members left to comment? Ms. Liu? I mean, Ms. Park? Ms. Uh, Park? Um, yes, so, so I, I do agree, but I do think that I want to warn us against um, using this as a tool that should be used sort of across the board. I know that there is a desire for more local control, but then with this statement, it's sort of like when it is convenient or when we agree with it, we'll agree with the state or a higher level, a higher authority, or like when not, then we'll, you know, go with the lower authority. And so I just, I think that I don't want to set a precedent of, of um, picking and choosing which um, which rules set at which level we're going to follow based on what's necessarily like convenient for us. So in this case, I, based on the logic that's been laid out, I do agree, but I just want to warn against us, um, us using this as a tool too, too frequently, um, in, in writing letters or, or appealing or figuring like, you know, picking and choosing which rules we want to follow. And then also with the strong recommendation versus mandate language, I think that led to, so much confusion in the past as well. And so um, just recognizing like we're in a different situation now. And so we have different feelings about this language, but pre like, you know, last year we had very different thoughts. And so um, where we wanted 
more clear direction and 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 black and white direction from from um, public health authorities and so um just like commentary mostly but just wanted to put that out there thank you mm -hmm. mr muhammad yeah uh thank you president Han. um on march i believe we had a meeting on this topic and and march 7th i believe it was and and in that meeting i expressed my thoughts and concerns about um some of the guidelines from the county and the inconsistencies that were there and some of the discriminatory factors that were also present and i stated my concerns th then i know a lot has been already revised and updated however I, I do believe that you know there has to be some alignment um with the state and the county on how we need to move forward so I do support um, what we have on the agenda, which is to request some alignment. Um, what I'm not comfortable with, and I think this goes to Ms. Park's point, is recommending a particular um, prescription, whether it be you have to wear a mask or you don't have to wear a mask. You should get vaccinated or you should not get vaccinated. Uh, I want to stay away from that because that is not my area of expertise or the board's areas of expertise. But where I think we can request um, some clarification is uh, an alignment uh, with the two. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Gerson. Um, I agree with um, Mrs. Miss, Mrs. Park. Um, th this bothered me as well. Um, I have spent so much time fighting for local control um, that the state, I mean, if you look at the state's requirements for graduation, we might as well tell all of our sophomores, congratulations, you'll be finishing high school this year. Um, they won't be ready for college, but the state has decided that that they've met, you know, the vast majority of their requirements. In, in Torrance Unified, we have a much higher standard. We have students, you know, the majority of our students are um, college ready when they complete um, high school with us because we have local control and, and we um, our our community likes these standards. Um, this this particular issue is is just it, it's all political and and it, it frustrates me because I want to remain a neutral jurist. I I want to hear people's opinions and I want to be able to move and and make the right decision at the time. And none of us can predict the future. Um, you know, do we feel like that that things are changing at LACDPH a little slower than they should be? It it feels like that everyone kind of feels that way. Um, but I also um, value the relationship that uh, we and I personally have created with LACDPH. I know that when I call, I always get a return call from a supervising nurse or doctor. I don't know if every school board member gets that treatment or if I've, you know, because of the amount of time that I've spent that, that I have earned some credibility with them. But I find that when I give suggestions or when I ask for things that I always get some kind of affirmative um, and, and a lot of respect. And I really appreciate that relationship. Um, I do. I, I've heard Mrs. Liu say that she has sent a letter and has made her position very clear. I know that we have sent um, a letter in the past, and and I know that I have personally expressed my opinions, and I will continue to do so uh, with them. But I do not support um, signing off on a on a letter of complaint and and just um, being a nag or or making this seem like that all of these other districts are are signing this letter, and so I need to sign this letter too. Um, I want to keep my credibility with LACDPH, and I want to be able to 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 do what's right at the time and and remain open-minded and i don't want to say that you know that we should always be following the state because i've talked to um a state epidemiologist and i was not impressed and i've talked to a lot of um, mds medical doctors at lacdph who are clearly super intelligent and and i do respect a lot because they really do know what's going on and the fact that we have a lab in LA County where we can actually know what is here. Um, most counties do not have that. And we are so fortunate to have so many resources. So I don't disagree that um, LACDPH might be moving too slow on this, but I, I do not want to sign my name to a letter saying you must, I, I demand that you follow the state. I want them to be smart. Um, and I, I would like them to be as agile as Torrance Unified has been going through the pandemic, um, but, but I don't support the, the letter. 
Thank you, Dr. Kristen. Just to kind of clarify, so the reason why I brought this up too is because of the fact right before school started, there was an issue. We we're very close to having required indoor masks right before school started. I vehemently emailed, contacted LADPH, begging them that you do not start the school year this way. I'm not sure if anyone on my fellow board members emailed them, but I was adamant that we did not start the school year um, with masks. And she barely made that decision right before school started. Now, without a political decision, people can argue that, right? But I think that's why we need to have a voice so that the LED page understands where we stand. Just as much as the state gives local control to the counties to make the decisions, right? They say, you know what, we can recommend, but counties can go more conservative. I, I'm asking for that same agility for us. You know, if LA, if state says LA County, you can go, then let this, let county let us make those decisions as well like you said local control to me is important so that we can make these decisions going forward itself and i understand obviously we don't want to use this as always an argument like you know what you got to do this not do this at all but i think on this one i think that is important and i think again two weeks from now this could be all moot point anyways right because we're gonna be the lowest tier so but i think it's important that, that we are clear about our position you know one thing i wanted to make sure is that the public understands hearing from the board members of where we stand on this issue people say well people have said it before or that's true, but things change, right? So the, does the position still remain the same, right? We could have changed our minds in six months, five months, three months, right? So we want, I wanted to make sure as a board that people heard from us where we stood. And so can we have a motion to approve? Oh, no, that's not just a discussion. So you have our direction, Dr. Stowe. So, um, so just to understand, so I'll, I'll draft a letter and maybe share it with you as, as board president. Um, and and then we'll we'll get it out tomorrow. But Dr. Gerson, you do not want your signature on that letter. Is that what I'm hearing? No, I will not sign. Okay. Would it be possible to Would it be possible to get a preview of that before we sign? Uh, sure. Yeah, I can okay. communicate with each individual. Okay. Individually. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Moving on to 10.5 approval of proposed board policies update revisions. Uh, Dr. Stowe, or is it? Uh, this was one board policy that got left off the last batch. Um, again, you can waive the second reading and just approve it. Thank you. Any comments? I, I appreciate how the state school board association's language around dress code is more reflective of the reality students are living in. And, mm -hmm. um, what's crossed out is that a new cross out because I see the words in red that are being placed in, but this the straight through. Is that being eliminated in this time or has it been eliminated in the past and it just still exists? The the strike through in black is being taken removed. out and what's being added is the red text. So basically every dress code we currently have will now be against board policy. So yeah, back still. Based on the way I read this, every dress code that I've seen viol will now violate this board policy. I'm not sure I follow. Yeah. Let me let me read it to the public. Um, the Board of Education believes that appropriate dress and grooming contribute to a productive learning environment. The board expects students to wear clothes that are suitable for the school and activities in which they participate. Students' clothing must not present a health or safety hazard or include any discriminatory words, pictures, or messages which would interfere with the educational process. So now um, it is very specific health and safety um, and very specific to discriminatory. So there are others. Rather um, than a distraction. At the distraction yeah, is eliminated, which was a bit ambiguous, but it, it also it allows a lot of things that currently are in dress code that are not necessarily would be considered discriminatory, wouldn't necessarily considered to violate a person's safety, um, but would still not fall under this, um, even though it could be incredibly distracting to the learning environment or um, or cause people um, discomfort um, that they could still they could still be incredibly uncomfortable with what other people are wearing, which I, and I just know because we have my, sexual harassment laws that that do apply, but would not be covered under this. And I don't think it's a responsibility for like young women to cover themselves up so that people are not objectifying. Like I, I don't I think putting that onus on 
on students to not be a distraction. Like I, I appreciate this language being more prescriptive. So, let's so I so. I was thinking about a guy who has his pants around his knees and you can just see his underwear. So, um, so I so I want to add a little bit to this too. So um, I have an issue with that word being distracted, being taken out. Uh, and the reason why is because when we look at our AR 5132, there are things in there that assumes distraction. Right. For example, this is what it says: swimmer, excessively short skirts, shorts, excessively low cut tops, two tops, and lingerie are not appropriate school wear. So why not? Is it because they're distractions? My question is: is that you put things in the language on the AR that it seems like they're there not because of safety and ha um, ha um, safety and hazard issues, but because they fall under this category of distraction, right? Because I don't understand how. Excessively short skirts, shorts, excessively low cut tops, two tops, and lingerie are not appropriate school wear because all you said was safety and healthy. Imagine um, safety and hazard earlier. The reason why that these guidelines are in there in the AR is because they all follow that word distraction. That's why that's my assumption, right? That's why you categorize these issues, right? You also put do not due to student identification, campus security concerns, hoods are not to be worn. That's a safety issue, right? That's a safety issue. I get that. But then you have that other one about uh, swimwear and cut, you know, low cut tops. Ooh, I, I, don't, I don't get that. My thing is, is that I understand why distraction is there, right? Because I understand what Ms. Mrs. Park understanding is, right? Because we, you should allow women to express themselves, whatever, right? But the reality is when you have qualifications, it's, it's already there, right? You, you're putting a limit to this, right? So either you get rid of that AR, right? Or you put the word distraction back in. I think, I think um, the issue that I have with our dress code too is not only about what not to wear. I, I wish we could talk about the idea of presenting yourself as a person, you know, the, the, you know, it, your dress is not defined who you are, right? Just kind of like, I wish we could put something more positive in our dress code, you know, rather than what you can't do, what you can do, you know, something kind of just inspiring people of why dresses. So how you present yourself is such an important, beautiful thing. You're beautiful for who you are. But my concern here is when you take out that word distraction, your AR does not make sense, especially that one paragraph. And so either the AR has to change, or I think our board policy has to be changed. So I agree with Dr. That's why I, I agree with Dr. Gerson on that because I think that um, it's a weird it's weird to get rid of that because the phrase that you put in has nothing to do with distraction. It's just a totally different thing, and so that's the question I have as well. And so that's just my comment. Anyone else? So we had, we had a committee that worked on on this dress code uh, language, both the BPA and the AR. Um, so. Uh, Dr. Egan, you want to address that at all, or or maybe we pull the item, we have to bring it back at a separate meeting when we're ready to talk about it. I, I Yeah, I don't want to waive the second reading because I'd like the public to know and make comment if they want to before I make a decision. Yeah, I do not want to waive safe from reading either, so I concur with that. Yeah, so we have a majority on that, and so um, we need to vote on that about not waive the second reading, or do we just, Dr. Stowe? Yeah, it's just, I mean, this is just a, it's a presentation yes. of the item and yes. then bring it back it's a item, yes. for, to vote on at the next meeting. So any other comments, Mrs. Liu or Mrs. Park, any other comments or, I think oh, Dr. Oh, Dr. Egan, Dr. I'm sorry, Dr. Egan, yes. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, this is a good discussion and I just want to clarify for the board and the public, the, the process um, and sort of how all of this conversation was initiated that resulted in the language that you see before you today. Um, so going back into the beginning of the school year last year, there was a group of female students who approached their principal and um, spoke about some things that they felt culturally were very important for them to be able to wear in their hair. And as a result of the existing policy that we have in writing here today that then drove the school's level, which which all of this will, which the schools really can't act and adopt any new language in their policy until you all uh, consider and decide on where, what direction we take here. Um, so a, as a result of that, though, the principal looked very closely at the existing school policy and recognized that um, there was some room um, to protect their own personal interests um, and way in which they identified um, and wanted to express themselves that aligned um, not only with the way they felt most confident and comfortable dressing, but uh, culturally as well, that they were they were being excluded. 
And um, so in, in addition, then that prompted some discussion among uh, student councils at the high school level in particular. Um, in fact, I can recall Mr. Han, your son was quite instrumental in that and bringing that conversation forward to the four uh, ASB director, uh, ASB presidents that then uh, shared that with me. Um, so this was sort of a groundswell um, interest of the student body at the high school level. And um, as a result, then uh, Mr. Pearson, who's in the audience with us today, um, pulled together a committee of school leaders, which included administrators um, and high school deans who deal most prominently with issues that that are um, in the way. I don't want to use the word distraction because, you know, there, there are infractions, there are um, distractions, there are really quite honestly issues that that come to bear that, um, you know, really impede the learning process on the campus um, with the way that students stress sometimes. And so some of it is a matter of understanding um, where folks are coming from with the way they choose to dress or feel as if that's the only option that they do have. And so we were able to have uh, over a period of several months, some really great discussion uh, that Mr. Pearson led and a process that included student input um, and staff input at our middle schools and high schools. And so um, that committee then came up with these recommendations on adjustments in language. And um, I would just ask that that the board, um, you know, just be aware of that and, um, you know, be considerate of of what those factors were and if there's more information that I can gather and provide about the specificity of some of the language that's being asked to be excluded or included, then I'd be happy to do that for you between now and the next meeting. Any other comments from the board? And I do appreciate that. I, I think that we do recognize that. We do appreciate the committee's work on that. I think that's why when we look, when I looked at it, it was, I appreciate the effort. Um, I think that we do need clarity around this. I think this is a huge issue. Um, especially for students. Uh, but I think what surprised me though, was uh, last Friday when, not this Friday, Friday, when was that game at uh, the rainy day, Brandon? Yeah, two Fridays ago. Um, somebody said, I guess we have no more school, I guess we have no more dress code in our district. Um, and I was like, no, we do. And they're like, well, it doesn't look like it. And so, and, and I get, I get why that person said that, but I, I think that, um, there is kind of misconception on that comment too, right? But it, the idea that, you know, um, this is gonna be an issue. And I think it could be misinterpreted when you get rid of that word distraction. I, I think the public may have concerns with that, and especially again, and I think um, the AR, again, the AR is kind of interesting to me. That's why that, that one AR phrase is, why is that there? Um, either we remove that AR phrase or, um, it has to be consistent. I, I I feel like there's an inconsistency between the AR and the board policy. And so, so it's something to think about, review. Um, I just, that's the feeling I get uh, when I read it. Um, and so maybe it's just me. I don't know. We'll provide more information. Yeah. All right. So I guess we'll have to um, further discuss on this when we yes. um, meet next time. 10.6. No, we, we need to vote on this, right? For a second, do we have to vote on this? No. No. Okay, because this is approval. Okay. Uh, 10.6 adopt resolution number AS-03-22-23 of the Board of Education of the Torrance Unified School District, reconfirming de declaration of surplus property and authorizing request to extend the State Board of Education waiver of the surplus property competitive bidding procedures of Education Code Section 17466 ET sequence, I guess. Yeah. It's sec. Sec. <laughs> I was sometimes I've anyway. uh, So this is uh, the board deciding if they choose to pass a resolution asking for an extension of the waiver uh, for the RFP process at the Hamilton property. So again, no decision's been made, anything about what to do with Hamilton. We're just continuing to keep our options open to see if there is some higher and best use for that property that takes care of the district needs, also takes care of the needs of the various programs that are there currently, but then again, does something more for the district. Perhaps it's additional rental income, uh, perhaps it's converting that property to another use, and again, getting some kind of income stream for that. So uh, what we have to do for this process is I reached out to the three groups that had uh, specific concerns the last time. I also reached out to all of the collective bargaining units and I reached out to the 7-Eleven Commission to ask any and all, do you have any comments about 
the extension of the particular waiver that's already in place. Uh, I received back information from three different 7-Eleven committee members that said we see individually no need to meet again and discuss this. The waiver that was there and the process that was followed at the time made sense to us. We are not calling that into question at this point. So in effect, they're in, uh, saying they're fine with the extension of the waiver for an additional year. I did not hear back from any of the other groups that I reached out to. Thank you, Dr. Butler. Any comments from the board? I was just gonna say that I support the um, moving forward with getting the, of keeping the waiver, but emphasizing that I that nothing is happening with the property and I'm not voting for anything to happen to the property. We're just voting, you know, I'm just voting to extend the waiver. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if so, I can add on just to that piece, because it's part of the waiver application, I apologize. Uh, but it's stating the same thing that if anything were to happen regarding the property, if we were to enter into any, any negotiations, it would be a process that would come to the board first, public would have opportunity to provide input, and then we would move forward at that point if the board so chose. So I just want to express my gratitude, Dr. Butler, for reaching out to everybody. Um, so, so again, this is extension of the waiver. We have no plan right now. And so I think it's a great thing. So that gives us flexibility. So thank you so much. Can we have a motion to adopt? So moved. First, second. Second. You got a first and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against say nay. Motion adopted. Thank you. Consent items. Is there anything that any of the board members would like to pull from the consent items? Anyone? I like to pull, if not, I have to pull 14.2, if I can. Anyone else would like to pull an item? I Take move that we accept all consent items except 14.2. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against say nay. All right, motion approved. So going to 14.2, uh, I just want to make a comment on this. So a couple of things I wanted to highlight on this um, thing is the very first one, I, the big, biggest one I wanted to commend is South High School uh, for this um, field trip that they're planning, right? They're trying to do a college tour. And um, my understanding is expose students to college campuses, resources, degrees, and major target underperforming subgroups from college and career index. And those who expose past low graduation rates to provide access and exposure to college campuses. I love this. I, I think that it, I think this is something that we should do more often all the campuses is to show kids um, what college can look like, uh, and especially target those who perhaps don't think thinks a dream or whatever it may be. Uh, I think it's a huge, huge um, encouragement and a benefit. I, I really want to applaud South High School for making this happen. Um, I'm excited for them. I'm excited that we can do this. Um, and so I just wanted to express uh, my gratitude. I just dropped my son off at UCLA last week and uh, just being there just made me excited, you know, and so I think for any college student, just to start dreaming again, what possibilities can be is a big thing. The other one I wanted to highlight was the um, North High School. Um, they're going to be visiting a, um, a aerospace company, um, Dukumun, I guess it's called, a manufacturing day. Uh, I want to express my gratitude to this uh, place um, for the idea of partnering with us to give kids STEM opportunities to kind of encourage them to show them. Uh, what STEM looks like and what they can do with STEM um, so that we will create a future generation of innovators, thinkers, and technicians. And so we love this idea of partnership um, with these school um, companies. Uh, Dr. Stowe and I had the opportunity to meet Epirus, uh, a defense company here in Torrance, and they look are looking to partner with us. I was invited to another company um, to, to um, visit as well. We do appreciate these partnerships so that these kids can also have dreams about what their careers could look like. You know, sometimes you wonder what am I gonna do with math and science, but there are so many fields, so many opportunities that um, are available. And so um, I really got excited about these field trips. And so I wanna applaud um, all the hard work all these people are doing for these things. So I make a motion to approve 14.2. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against say nay. Motion approved. All right, going forward. Um, Revisions to administrative regulations. Do we need to do anything there, Dr. Stone? No, right? Okay. Um, report from the Board of Education, um, from SoCal Rock, me. So um, I would like to have a board discussion on this. Um, it's going to be a kind of a heated discussion, I think. Um, so I kind of wanted to uh, express what's 
the SoCal Rock Board has asked me to at least present here today. They've asked if we would consider raising the fee um, per student at SoCal Rock. Currently, uh, what the current rate for each student that we ch they charge us is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Currently, we have the second most students at SoCal Rock. We have 72 kids enrolled in SoCal Rock. I think Redondo has like 73. We got beat up by Redondo by one. So they are, we are considering raising the fee um, for SoCal Rock. Uh, and I think the reason why is because ever since the LCFF formula, uh, we have not changed that fee. So when the LCFF formula got changed, we have not changed that fee. Now, you got to think about that. Just this past meeting, we just gave our superintendent a 5% raise. That was his first raise since. Uh, we gave our staff a raise because of the fact that they have not gotten a raise since the LCFF formula got changed, right? And so because of it, uh, we felt the necessity that it is time for us, especially with inflation, especially with times of change, everything has gone up except for the fee at SoCal Rock, right? Which is one, two, three, four. And so they are asking us that we would consider uh, raising the fee. Uh, and the thing is, is there a price right now? We don't know what that fee is, right? And so, so they were saying, come on now, you know, if you only have 72 students, let's say we just raised it $200, it's only 1,500. I mean, it's only um, 72 times what? 15, I mean, 70 times 200 is what? 3,400, right? It's not gonna break your bank. You just say, you know what? We have a lot of, you know, money from the government. I get that. I said, you know what? But we have strong objections to this. But I think it may be time that we would at least consider the idea of raising the fee. Now, to argue this too, not only because of the fact they haven't gotten a increase in their student registration, they may move without us, right? So they may, all four districts might say, um, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and therefore the fee will be right, raised without, with or without us. Uh, but I think it will be collaborative if we were to join them and to approve the increase in the cost uh, for SoCal Rock. And I told them this is, this is going to be a heated debate, so um, I would like to ask just to have your idea. So at least I can go back to SoCal Rock and say, hey, yeah, I, I did, I tried, but um, this is, was the result. And so I kind of wanted to hear from the rest of you. I want to remind the board that we cannot uh, discuss things that are not on the agenda. We can only hear your report yeah. oh, that's and right. bring that's it right. back. Yes. And and then we can debate thank it, you, Dr. Brickson. Yes. <laughs> yes. So can we bring this back? Brown Act protection yeah, here. <laughs> thank you. So can I bring? Can we bring this back and make it an agenda item? I guess. Certainly. Yes. And, to and just to clarify, those raises were for SCROC, not to USD employees. No, SCROC. Yeah. For, I'm, I'm sorry, SCROC right. employees. Right. SCROC employees. Yes, for the SCROC employees. Yes. Yes, we can uh, agendize this for the next meeting, October third. Thank you. The second thing from SoCal Rock is that um, SoCal Rock established a foundation. And so they're going to be going out to um, businesses now, corporations to ask for funding. So it's called the SoCal Rock Education Foundation, and it is now formalized. So we're going to be forming a um, executive committee as well as an advisory board. Exec I'm sorry, executive board as well as an advisory board. So we should be selecting those people hopefully by November's meeting. Um, we have a new executive board as well as a new advisory board for SoCal Rock. So those are the two big, big announcements that we have from SoCal Rock. Okay. Moving forward, CSBA, Dr. Gerson. Uh, nothing specifically from CSBA, um, just getting closer and closer to the annual education conference. Um, but I'll take the opportunity to talk about how amazing school opening has been. Um, I've enjoyed seeing campuses and seeing um, everyone out at sporting events and getting rained on with you. That was fun. Um, we we actually saw real rain at the at the Torrance High football game. We got soaked. It was fun. <laughs> um, and then... Uh, Master Kikuno, it's nice to see you. Um, Mr. Han doesn't know this, but I actually coached him in baseball when he was little, and now he's almost almost an adult. So you, you said baseball? Yeah. He doesn't play baseball anymore. It must have been that good then, huh? Oh, he, was, <laughs> he was good back then, but he found other interests, as we all did. Um, so thank you. Any comments from the board? Dr. Mohammed. Yeah, just a couple of comments. Uh, one, uh, th uh, I participated in the uh, reopening task force committee, so I appreciate that that's uh, ongoing and um, just kind of getting together uh, periodically to kind of get the health and pulse of, of the district. So that's very good. And thank you for uh, allowing me to participate in that. 
Um, secondly, I uh, got a couple of schools slated for back to school. So hopefully I'll be able to make it out there. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Park. Mrs. Park. It's okay. I'll go by Rose. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to point out um, that we're doing, we have a contract with Go Culture, and it's, it's just really encouraging to see that our DEI trainings and, and trying to ensure that um, we are able to um, to provide other resources for our staff as well, to be able to feel supported, to belong, and, and have that also be the foundation for, for our students as well, um, of, of having trusted adults that they feel like they can share all aspects of their identity with and, and be able to have the language to engage with um, students as they're teaching the curriculum, but also as they're just building relationships. So um, appreciated that, that we're continuing the investment. Thank you, Mrs. Park. How about you, Dr. Kristen? Nothing? Mrs. Liu? Well, I normally have so much to say, but um, this this at this meeting, we don't have any special uh, classified employees anniversaries, so I will not be saying any. And I just want to recognize that as a past, a former PTA mom, I um, want everyone to know that we did pass a resolution in the last meeting um, recognizing that September and October are PTA month, membership month. And like uh, Mrs. Reagan said earlier, I encourage everybody to go out there and support your PTA or PTSA. The other resolution that I was going to mention is that it is the uh, month for the Hispanic Heritage Month, but then I think Dr. Gerson has already talked about it. So I just want to make sure everyone knows that we are very much happy to recognize this and we do it every year. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Liu. Um, it's my explosion remarks. I want to say thank you to uh, Tow um, Towers, Seaside, and Torrance L. As I was able to visit them for back to school night, it was great to see the parent participation. Uh, it was every classroom was packed, and so it was great to see uh, parents in the classrooms learning and seeing, and to see the teachers so excited. So I want to apply all the efforts. And as Dr. Mahan mentioned, this week we have all the middle schools and high schools, as we heard tonight. West of Torrance High is Wednesday. Um, again, it'd be great for you to come back and see, meet the teachers, and to see all that is going on. Also, I want to congratulate our previous board member, uh, Don Lee, for being Distinguished Citizen of the Year in Torrance. So we love Don, and so we want to say congratulations to Don again. We celebrate you, and we are grateful for you. Uh, but I, I also wanted to conclude on a uh, more somber note, if, I, if it's okay, Dr. Still, if I do mention the kids, student's name, it is public. Uh, is that okay, Dr. Egan? So our hearts, um, I'm, as, as a board, I can truly say that, and as, as well as a cabinet, we are uh, just devastated by the loss of North High School 11th grader Su Hyun Chung. Um, who passed away this past week. Uh, we want the family to know and the school to know that our hearts are with you um, and we mourn with you. And um, if there's anything that we can do, we want to support North High as well as the students there, as well as the faculty and this family. And so again, our condolences to the family for your tremendous loss and our prayers and our thoughts uh, will be with you. And so can we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? In memory of, in, oh, sorry, in memory of retired teacher Lillian P. Cooper Smith and retired teacher Marion Little Fair. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against. Oh, meeting adjourned. <laughs>